Well, there's more imagery from earlier. That's Cozumel, Mexico. The storm surge, the flooding that we are seeing there in the light of day, getting a lot more damage reports from the hurricane that hit the northeastern Yucatan Peninsula. That was Hurricane Delta still impacting the Yucatan Peninsula with strong winds, heavy rain, that storm surge threat still ongoing. And then, of course, we'll be tracking the storm as it moves through the Gulf of Mexico and it's going to head up to the United States. It's a large storm, very scary when we see it here on the map, but of course, also very scary if you are inside the storm and having to deal with the storm as it was passing over. So we're going to talk to somebody right now who is located in that area in the northeastern Caribbean. This is Chris Liberto and Chris, we appreciate you joining us here on Weather Nation. You're there in the Yucatan Peninsula. You were there for vacation. Kind of take us uh, through the, the process of how things went when uh, it looked like things were really going to start to go downhill for that area of the Yucatan Peninsula. Yeah, so first off, thanks for having me on. And you know, it's been a, a long 24 hours, but um, you know, everything here at the resort that we're staying at really ran smoothly yesterday um, for much of the day. And then, you know, about one or two o'clock, we started to really see a change and things started to close around the resort. And we started to get notification of, you know, be aware, you might need to evacuate. And uh, it was about 9 p.m. last night when my wife and I, um, who we had just gotten here the night before, we were asked to evacuate our room uh, just for being too close to the, uh, the ocean there. So. Um, you know, pretty calm. Everybody was really calm, but definitely very scary, you know, when you're coming into a, a country and, and all of a sudden you're, you're um, dealing with a hurricane. And what was the process? What did you guys have to do to tough out this storm? Where did you go? Were you uh, supplied with goods to, uh, to stay hydrated, to be comfortable? What was it like? Yeah, so we're at Hotel Eschcaret, and I will say the staff here was amazing. Um, we actually went to one of their main conference rooms area. Um, I think maybe, I, I don't know the number, but it felt like 200 or 300 people in there. And um, given, you know, just your pillow and your blankets, so not exactly, uh, you know, living the, the lifestyle here. But, I mean, they treated us very, very well. They had food um, prepared for us when we got there um, and just kind of played a movie for kids, those who were traveling with kids. And uh, we got a chance to get some sleep. Um, my wife, I think, slept fairly, fairly well. Um, but. Uh, you know, it was just a relief this morning when we were finally let go, you know, after what about 12 hours or so being the, in the conference room. And what was it like with the other people that you were in the uh, in the room with? Were uh, people scared? Were they, they feeling safe? That was that area secure? Just felt like you're going to be able to tough it out in that part of the hotel? Yeah, I mean, I, I know for myself, I felt safe. There's obviously nerves when you're dealing with any type of um, storm pattern like we saw last night. But, you know, I definitely I think everybody felt safe, a little bit uneasy. If anything, um, you know, we, we could hear them boarding up the room um, just to further safe, you know, um, provide some safety. Uh, and so that was kind of unsettling when you hear the tools and everything and hammers to, to really uh, secure those doors. And so that went on for, you know, a good two, three hours. And then I'm sure they, you know, continued throughout the night as well, really making things safe. So, um, but for the most part, the room was great. Um, you know, it, obviously with COVID a thing too, um, you know, we were very, very um, impressed with everybody masking and doing what we could at least to stay at least, you know, five feet or so apart. And I'm curious, we're seeing some video of people exiting after uh, braving out the storm. Were you seeing any damage, any, any downed trees, any damage to the hotel when you uh, came out of the building? Was it uh, a very messy aftermath, if you will? Yeah, not a whole lot of damage um, here. There definitely were, you know, your, your normal debris, palm tree leaves and, and just regular tree uh, or regular leaves down. Walking back to the hotel room along our hallway, the corridor had some, you know, water that was just kind of standing water and by our doorway. But really from the looks of it, at least where we're at, at, uh, at the resort, it, it looks like things got off pretty well. Um, when you showed that video, uh, you know, from Cozumel this morning, that's the first we've actually seen. My wife actually asked if we had heard any reports um, and so it's really, uh, you know, tragic to see that there are other areas that have been impacted by this. And like I say, that's the first we've seen or heard of any of the damage. And I am curious, what are your thoughts on maybe planning another trip or vacation down into the Caribbean? Has this made you maybe second guess doing that again? Maybe not in October or hurricane season, but, uh, you know, we've been down here before and, you know, you just got to take it for what it is. And it's a heck of a memory that we're going to have um, and we're just thankful we did not bring our kids on this trip. We came and brought them a few years ago, but they're home safe and sound. So we'll be back. We'll be back for sure.
Well, Chris, we appreciate you joining us. Very happy you, your family, and everybody there uh, was able to stay safe and ride out this storm. Uh, it was a very, very fast and rapid intensifying storm, so uh, time was of the essence to be safe, and we, we really appreciate the uh, insight that you've given us from inside the storm, basically, when it moved through that area. Be safe, Chris, and we'll talk with you soon. Hey, thanks so much. I appreciate it. Well, there's a look at Galveston, Texas, Meredith, the Gulf Coast of Texas, all the way over to Alabama, dealing with tropical alerts as this storm, Delta, moves closer to the Gulf Coast. The Gulf Coast is not getting much of a break. And the Gulf Coast not getting much of a break, Patrick. And we've been seeing a storm after storm this season. We've been showing you some of the reports of what's been coming in from parts of Mexico and from Galveston all the way over toward the panhandle of Florida. We could be seeing more alerts issued out there for you for storm surge and for hurricane or tropical storm force winds. So we do have those watches which are now in effect as we get into Friday an increased risk of destructive storm surge and damaging winds. But then we also need to watch out for some of the heavy rain that's in the forecast for not just along the coast, but even as this thing moves inland. So we are looking at more strengthening of this storm. Not a lot of wind shear in the early path of this as well as the warm waters aiding the storm in further strengthening. But then as it approaches some cooler waters, we might see a little bit of weakening before it approaches the Louisiana coastline. But still, there's a lot of uncertainty in the intensity of the storm as it makes landfall and the exact location. Although you can see right now we are looking at a landfall imminent later this week into the weekend along the Gulf Coast. Stay with us in just a few minutes. We are going to talk to one of the hurricane hunters. We'll let you know what it's like being up there in the sky, analyzing one of our strongest storms we've seen this season.